scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. In pray. I want to engage this law in my life. Absolute surrender. Prove my motive. Prune my motivation. Prune my motive. Prune my motivation. All I desire is Jesus revealed. All I desire is Jesus glorified. In my promotion, Jesus revealed. Jesus glorified. In my being anointed, Jesus revealed. Jesus glorified. In my being famous, Jesus revealed. Jesus glorified. enter a covenant with God Lord as you lift me you are lifted in my life as you raise me you are raised in my life as you promote me you are promoted in my life I have no agenda to make a name for myself my pursuit is not for self aggrandizement it is for your kingdom Hallelujah. I submit to you in the name of Jesus sincerely. This is my one agenda. At the back of everything that I do, at the back of everything that I seek, is you that I see. Is you that I see. At the center of it all, it's you that I see, it's you that I see. That must become your desire. Why are you looking for that job? Why are you seeking to be a billionaire? There's nothing wrong with those things in themselves. God is not interested in those things. He wants to know what is the motive. Even those who practice occultism, these native doctors and these sorcerers who ask them, you want money? I can give you money. But the condition is that there has to be an allegiance. That's what they want. Satan came to Jesus, your Jesus, and said, I will give you everything. Just bow to me. That's what I want. I don't want the money. What does Satan do with money? Listen to me. Dear people of God, there are levels of liftings. There are levels of influence. There are levels of honor we are yet to tap into. The way up is to go down. That's how Jesus taught us. The Bible says, he that ascended, he first descended. Are we blessed? This is a principle I've learned. One of the mysteries that the Lord gave to me. One time the Lord spoke to me and he said, Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. And I vowed that for the rest of my life, I will let Jesus be revealed in my life. He's the mystery behind the results that you see in this ministry. 
he came to Nicodemus by night and says, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God, for no man can do these things. These results, you see, it is not within the power of a man to do it. I know that sometimes we men of God, we like to take the glory and to shine and make it look as if it's our intellect is a lie. This is the Lord's doing. That is why it is marvelous in our sight. Men cannot go that far in their strength. So for your business, forget about the issue of business now. Forget about the issue of fame. Forget about the issue of lifting. Just focus on him and say, Lord, purify my heart. Sincerely. I confess that somewhere along the lines of my pursuit, I've been motivated by other things. Don't feel guilty. This is why you are in the house of God. I saw that man buy a jeep and something within me said you are not a failure he was your classmate make sure you get it too I saw my contemporary in ministry demonstrating superior dimensions of power and then I went to fast and said Lord don't embarrass me all I want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted if we stop here tonight you go back with this understanding and pray and God will tell you this for some of you this is the one is not the devil limiting your rising is that God knows if you rise without hearing this message you will be a disaster first to yourself because no eye has seen no ear has heard let me tell you if it's money you are looking for the God in heaven can daze you in a way that you will sit down and look at money and not know what to do with it believe me as I'm saying it now, some of you are saying, Ah, God, you will not give you, you will not answer that prayer until that circumcision happens. Yes, sir. Hmm. That God can make any demand in your life, and your answer is, Yes, sir. Give me the car, it was yours from the beginning. Give me the house, it was yours from the beginning. Give me the ministry, it was yours. Give me the reputation, I'm only representing your reputation. The reason why you can trust the bank with your money is because of ease of withdrawal. When you go to withdraw, there's no stories. God is only able to trust you to the degree to which he can have it back without complaint. Can he give you greatness and fame and make demand? Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest. After 25 years of mockery. Let me tell you this. Honestly, if it is God you want to do business with, no matter how you pray and fast, the litmus test of death must happen to you. Must. It's a non-negotiable condition. If it is greatness in this kingdom you seek, there will be a demand something that is so alive in your life must die one day take Isaac offer him as a bond offering I'm not talking money here and Abraham rose up early do you know what that meant to Abraham's family life what was he going to tell his wife what were the newspapers imagine as a journalist interpret what happened in our contemporary world today a very notable prophet of God sacrifices his son that's the caption one million likes one million shares madman commentaries will come from several places the next one month will be the stories of people yet Abraham said I'm willing to risk my reputation that far Romans chapter 4 tells us his contemplations even though he was crying 
His plan was to kill Isaac and beg God to bring him back to life. You read it, it's in Romans chapter 4. Do you know how oil, oil that we use for the anointing, I hope you know it comes out of olive. And it does not just, you don't just pluck olive and then oil comes out of it. Find out how oil is made. You have to crush the olive. You pass it through a threshing floor or some kind of crushing system. And while you look at that olive being crushed, you don't even pity it because of the pain. You know the end product. And out of that crushing oil, you want the anointing to heal the sick genuinely, not fake miracles. You want the anointing to prophesy. You want superior grace. It won't just come by dropping an offering and hands laid on you. No, sir. There are wells in this kingdom that must be dug through hunger, through sacrifice, and through death. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very quickly, let's make progress. Mystery number two. Shilama Subra Haskadiba Lakatusiata. I won't dwell so much here because we've dealt with it. The second mystery that controls results in this kingdom is called the law of the mind, the law of mental transformation. The law of mental transformation very powerful spiritual law your life will always be a reflection of your mindset the recommendation that is applicable to us it says go and borrow vessels you don't need to borrow oil but borrow vessels borrow not a few and the bible says she gathered vessels and then he said, you now shut the door and begin to empty it. And then when she emptied it, what happened? The moment the vessels were expanding, the oil started expanding. And the Bible says, and when there was no more vessel, the oil stopped flowing. I want to lift you, but your mindset is too small for your prayer request if i really answer that prayer you don't have the capacity you see every time people receive more than what their mindset and their hands can hold they waste it and they abuse it the miracle of multiplying five loaf and two fish taught us a lesson these guys were hungry and when multiplication started happening without management multiplication without management led to wastage and they all left and jesus said oh dear mankind here is the lesson go and gather the crumbs so there were baskets to put that crumbs in and when they gathered it it was 12 basket full of wastage if you pour water in a cup it is only the size of the cup you you see that now the size of the cup water will be filled just to that level and every other thing will be a waste so god wants to lift you but in your mind, your mind cannot hold more than certain levels of leadership, more than certain levels of expansion. You may be a pastor and you are saying, Lord, I need you to bless me with members. And he says they are all over. There are over 7.2 billion people on earth. I can bring as many. But do you have the enlightenment and the transformation to manage what you are praying for? That's why the Bible says God answers what we ask or think your mind is a prayer warrior too when your mouth stops praying your mind continues that prayer so when your mouth is saying lord lift me your mindset says lord forget about that lifting i am not ready for it yet both your mouth and your mind are prayer warriors now you see most times in church 
we don't teach this because it doesn't seem to look very spiritual so we downplay it and we say you just continue to pray and we have people who continue to pray they study scripture and yet they never rise to notable points of influence they are not represented in anything superior I made a vow and a covenant with God that I would never raise a people who are just spiritually accurate, spiritually alive. I believe in influence. And influence happens through transformed mindsets, through renewal of the mind. Are we together now? The Bible says they limited God, Psalm 78, I believe verse 41, that they limited the Holy One in the wilderness. As mighty as God is, men can limit Him. They limited the Holy One. Could it be that your business can expand more than you have seen? Could it be that your ministry can expand? You know, I, I told you at the inaugural service of Koinonia, when the Lord spoke to me about coming to Abuja and all of that, I looked at it and I said, well, Lord, that's all right. And he made me to buy the map of Abuja, the map of Nigeria, the map of Africa, and the map of the world. Till today, they are on my table. I think something like that. And I looked at Abuja in the map and it became very small. Just six local governments. I said, I'm well able. It became small. Not small to demean it. But I said, there is nothing complicated about doing ministry. I said it sincerely. It would have sounded like arrogance. But my mind was receiving it. Hmm. I believe in the power of a transformed mind. Your mind is the authorized usher that leads your body to your tomorrow. Anywhere your mind has not entered, the gate will not be open for your body to enter. You don't have to fake any living. No, there's no point faking it. Your mind does not need a visa to travel with the spirit. Your mind does not need visa stamped on any passport. It can travel while your body is still where it is and go and verify that that tomorrow is there. It will come back and usher your body to that realm. It's true. The mind of Christ. Superior belief systems. Listen, you have to conquer the spirit of smallness. Not in a competitive way. We already spoke about the law of surrender. But small things. You do a business, you are just thinking of your family members. Very subsistent living. You, it says, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God is giving you a vision to have a bank. And you are saying, no, no, it's not for us. Oh dear. If your mind defeats you, you are defeated completely. Completely. The miracle of a transformed mind is a real miracle. You have to be convinced that God is able. I can do all things. It's a superior thinking. Fathers like Bishop David Oyedipo will call it a far above mentality. I've been exalted. Don't let people bully you. We live in a society where people can intimidate you. They look at your shoe and say your shoe is cheap, your dress is cheap and they make you feel stupid for going through the law of process. Find strength. Your mind is ahead of your body already. Someday, when your body now wears what your mind is wearing, you will see the difference. Do not be ashamed of your journey tomorrow. Don't try to fake anything with honor. See, success is not what you pursue. Success is what you attract by who you are becoming. More than what you do. You attract success by growth. Sustainable success is attracted by growth. Not just by doing things. When you have grown, almost anything can prosper in your hand. Are you blessed? The law of mental transformation. When I learned this, I became a student of transformation till the day I see his face. I have gathered materials. I continue to invest in my mind because I don't want to be limited. There is a generation that is depending on your transformation. You cannot afford to be small. 
all these all these childish things we do around you just find someone's car you go and lie down on it they will arrest you one day that's not how to grow hello please don't feel bad but that's not how to grow faith is not foolishness many things that we do in the name of faith that's not faith why fake something that can be real listen i will always give this analogy can you imagine someone who is trying to steal a piece of meat in a pot and just when he's stealing it they caught him and say it was your own the meal was prepared for you now imagine how stupid you will feel stealing what is your own the bible says all things are yours why fake it is your inheritance it's your destiny already this is not mere motivation it's true he that cometh from above is above all the bible says to set your mind and your heart on the things above and not things of the earth there are things i believe about god there are things i believe about life you carry a failure mentality no matter what kind of prayer is prayed on you you will fail i assure you you will fail and you will feed your mind back and say i knew it and you were right <laughs> listen to me i know that there are many people here who aspire to do great things for the kingdom god is not against your greatness he says i will increase your greatness and comfort you round about god is about making us great but listen to me the key is not running around trying to do things settle down and build your mind apostle i don't have capital all i know is god will give me money leave the issue of money the problem is not money the problem is to search for knowledge listen when you start growing in your mind there are some clothes you are wearing that must run away from you because that mindset will drive them away it's not about pride or humility whether you like it or not your there are names in your contact that will start going away when your mind is growing and others will start coming because the level of your transition does not allow to still have those physical conditions if our father in the lord baba deboye comes to stand here now and tells you ah something happened and my car spoiled some of you who would never give your relatives money for anything immediately right now with one phone call there will be cars lined up as if this is a car stand why because his level of transformation does not allow him to beg at that level again he has no this is a law where is the first phone you bought you can't even remember and you can't remember giving it out your mindset as it was transformed it became incorrect to still hold that kind of phone now i'm not saying holding an expensive phone is necessarily a proof of transformation just as an analogy have you seen someone who sits in a business class you know he's not supposed to be there everything around his life says you are not yet here you are sitting in a business class your shoe is betraying you your you don't know anybody there you don't have relationships that support that level of result it's a physical reality you have not yet arrived in you are holding a rubber ring life will push you back to where your mindset really makes you but when you grow ah, i wish i were not the one teaching this but it is true listen from that one room you can start growing you are learning what is the mentality of great people what does it take to have a great ministry what is the mentality of uncommon leaders not what is their results don't go around admiring people's results and laying on your hands and just claiming claim their mindset you don't need to forget about the result if the mindset is yours the signs that follow that mindset will come listen there are some of you the mindset you have you will never be able to cross one million in your account even if they give you 10 million 9 million would disappear mysteriously through carelessness through whatever and reduce you back to that realm because that is the realm your mind can take believe me
every ministry expands to reflect the mindset of the leaders there every business expands to reflect the mindset of the leaders every home expands to reflect the mindset of the parents every nation expands to reflect the mindset of their leaders Singapore was turned from a third world nation to a first world nation not because something came from heaven and landed there superior ideas Dubai was turned into a heaven yes they've not given their life to Christ in as much as we know but they are living on heaven in heaven now as far as paradise is concerned on earth someone can sit down and see a whole sea and yet in it he's seen something else ah, may God give us the miracle of superior belief systems in the name of Jesus Christ three keys to transit in mentally number one exposure exposure is a powerful blessing exposure is a double-edged sword it can kill and it can make there is a kind of exposure that will sorry to use that word it will rape your mindset you can be exposed wrongly and from that day you will never be patient towards life again but there is a correct exposure what is exposure broadening your horizon opening you up to the possibilities that exist beyond your frame of reference exposure until you watch a miracle if you watch somebody rise from a wheelchair in front of you you will not doubt it again sometimes God lifts us by taking us to places even though we are not really ready for it by taking us to places even though we are not really ready for it he keeps you there and you don't know what is happening to you till you leave that place you will be angry with where you are going back to that's a miracle and you make up your mind that in the name of Jesus I won't be at this level again Jesus was born in Nazareth but he refused to allow Nazareth live in him at age 12 when his contemporary teenagers were running up and down he was investing in his mind even though he was the son of God as a result in three years he took the world and said I'm done and levitated with honor back to heaven Africa we must wake up the problem is not lack of mineral resources the problem is not only leadership leadership is there but more than leadership we are victims of our thinking the many years of servitude has done something to us the color of your skin does not have an effect on your mind your background and where you come from does not have an effect on your mind there are no second-class citizens on earth except you make for yourself he that cometh from above the moment you receive Jesus you are born into a superior class of living this is a fact please make up your mind that you will not be small again make up your mind that you will not be small that what my father did not give me my children will eat it where I could not go you can't transfer the same mediocrity to your children it's okay that okay those who came before you could not go that far don't keep giving flimsy excuses while life is passing you and it does not come by hustling hustling is a demonic strategy work circumspectly as wives hustling is why people don't give God the glory the Bible says, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. He said the watchmen watch it, but in vain. It is vain to wake up early in the morning, to sleep late in the night, only to eat the bread of sorrow, but he gives his beloved sleep. We have systems of advantage in this kingdom. We are not left alone. The favor of God is there. The capacity to restore is there. The gift of man, there. The ministry of the Holy Spirit showing you what to do part time. Shout, I cannot fail. Please say it, I cannot fail. I reject failure. Now, if you confess like that and don't contend for transformation, you will soon be angry with what you are saying because it will remain empty talk for a very long time. 
there are people who have done it for many years oh i will not fail yet they keep going down confession is powerful but it's not the only key to the success equation content for transformation more than the clothes you buy invest in your mind buy materials superior materials technology has made it very easy for transformation with data of next to nothing you can settle down and watch videos and materials that that are consistent with scripture that edify you get all my teachings on them on mindsets they are free get them go online search for them they are free let the holy spirit do a walk you have to understand how the mind thinks i'm sorry to say it but secular education school does not teach people how to think no achievement is a science there are exact equations that produce achievement results you must sustain the ability to replenish and here's where it lies so you don't fear your success I submit to you in the name of Jesus Christ that the results that we see and we rejoice with it is ultimately God's doing but he's given keys there is no fear in this result because it will remain so it did not come by magic it did not come by mistake it can be replicated anywhere in the world and it is true you only fear when your result came by luck when it comes by knowledge knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom you can find rest listen like abraham he says from where thou art lift up your eyes i'm speaking to someone by the spirit from where you are not where you want to be from where you are you can make up your mind dr miles munro my eternally revered mentor changed my life radically was one of the first people the lord began to use to change my belief system i love him even in death bless his soul I heard his story how that he grew up in a family of how many people and they would look from their room and they could see the stars that was the level of the poverty and he made up his mind that things would not be this way but empty talk does not lead to results he began to contend for transformation by the truth more than clothes by the truth are we together Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. Verse 8. Philippians 4 verse 8. Finally, brethren, finally, koinonia, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, please look up, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise think on these things i never go for a meeting wondering will the power of god move will the sick be healed no 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 i have a mentality i never go alone i never go alone though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death thou art with me divine presence is a secret i know that his power his divine power i never come for a meeting wondering will people be blessed we're talking the power of the holy ghost here and the lord walking with them confirming the words with signs following there will never be a week where there is no testimony here it's impossible god must bear witness Oh, 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 I know who I am. Oh, 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 oh. I'm walking in power, walking in miracles, I live a life.
for favor. I'm working in power and working miracles. I live my life for favor. It's not a Pentecostal song. It is truth from scripture. The Bible says a man of honor who does not know will die like a beast in the field. Knowing who you are is not being aggressive and insulting people around. No. That's insecurity. There is a settled confidence. walking in power walking in miracles I expect favor every day every day honestly I really do I expect favor please sit down we have to rush so you must trust God for grace write two scriptures down you can read them when you get home very quickly genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 to 7 the key verse is verse 5 genesis chapter 11 11 i meant to say genesis 11. just write it and then you go and study at home but this was the story of nimrod kush building that tower whose top will reach the heavens the Bible says, verse 4, since you've projected it, let's just look at 4 and 5 quickly. The Bible says, Nimrod, he began to market this idea. It started with an idea. Let us build a city whose top may reach the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered on earth. Look what happened in the realm of the spirit. Verse 5, while Nimrod was busy working on their minds, the Bible says, the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men have finished building once their mindset received it god saw a building rising in the spirit and he came to say what is they've not started building on the ground but their mindset was receiving it everything in life is built twice it is first built in your mind then it is built physically whatever is built physically and not built in your mind you will lose it but destroy anything physical if it's built in your mind the law says it must be rebuilt It's why wealthy people may go down, they may have a season of some catastrophic events, financially and otherwise, and you see them smiling. You are even crying for them and yet they are smiling. They who are the victims, because they know that they not only sustain the ability to be fruitful, they have the ability to replenish. You will only fear your results when you do not know the laws that produce it. Watch this. I will always like to use people who cook. Imagine with me for a moment that you were to go and serve guests and while you were preparing the meal, something happened. And then everything just poured completely on the floor. And then they give you two more hours or three more hours. You will not be afraid again because you can still go back to the kitchen. Once the ingredients are there and you are the one who truly cooked, it's trouble if you just bought it somewhere. And the place is closed then you are in trouble but if you were the one who prepared it you can go back with confidence and even use the anger to make a better version of that thing and say what i forgot to add yesterday as i'm coming back now i'm adding it there law number three are you getting blessed the third mystery in this kingdom that has been responsible for the uncommon extraordinary results of the saints is called the law of mastery and competence the law of mastery the law of competence write it down please Proverbs 18 and verse 16.
A man's gift maketh room for him. And the Bible leaves an assurance that the gift like an usher can bring him before great men. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. Listen to me. It is powerful to be valuable. You know what it means to be valuable? To be valuable means that you sustain the ability to provide solutions that are needed and useful as far as the context of a civilization is concerned. Listen carefully. Not just the ability to provide solutions. The solutions must be needed and they must be useful with respect to that civilization. You are considered valuable to the degree to which your life and your skills provide solutions as a man of god i'm providing a solution the solution may be spiritual in context but it is still a solution number one i'm connecting you to faith number two i'm using the agency of the word of god as a reference to transform your thinking your thinking now being transformed will change your life I'm standing in partnership with the Holy Spirit to provide supernatural solutions, healings, miracles, signs and wonders. That is value. Many believers are just waiting for some magic to happen as far as their relevance is concerned. Let me tell you this. Men will only come to your light, not to you. If you are not carrying anything of value, nobody will look for you. Gentiles don't come to you. They come to your light. Let me tell you why you are alone. You are alone because there is nothing notable coming out of you that is commanding the attention of men. Value is powerful. You must have something to offer. Listen, the table of greatness was so designed that you don't just go there and shift a chair and sit down. The condition to join the great to sit on that table is that you first provide your value. Then that value is vetted. There is a threshold level of competence you must attain in order to be granted a seat with the great. Being valuable, as powerful as it is, is not enough. The highest position in every organization is for masters. Competence is a promoter. It can lift you beyond your background. It can lift you beyond your limitations. There's a kind of music called music of the masters. Many of you have listened to it. Those guys have mastered the art of not failing. When they sit down and they are playing, they have come to a point where they are one with what they are doing. They are not hoping they are right. Oh, you must trust God to be a master at something. Nobody will come and indefinitely be loyal to you for nothing. No. When you study leadership, there is a dimension of leadership that comes by results. People want to see results. They love you, but they love themselves too. They want to see genuine, replicable, consistent results. If you're a man of God, you must make up your mind that I will be competent. I will be competent in ministry, word delivery, excellent, prayer life, excellent, ethics of ministry, administration and managerial intelligence, excellent. Refuse to be small. Value is powerful. When I learned this, I began to rejoice. I found my way out of mediocrity. I found my way out of jealousy. I found my way out of competition. Mastery lifts you to such a pedestal in life. You are so distinguished, it will look like life is flattering you, but it's true. Let me tell you this. I learned this, and for the purpose of this discussion tonight, I want you to write it down. That... The kingdom of God operates based on a reward system. The kingdom of God operates based on a reward system. And there is an auxiliary law that is tied to the law of competence, the law of value, the law of mastery. I want to quote it for you 
so that you have it down and i pray that it will contribute to your lifting and your rising are you ready that the rewards that we have in life the rewards that we have in life is directly proportional to three things the rewards that we have in life is directly proportional to three things number one the need or the demand for what you do your rewards our rewards in life is directly proportional to number one the need or the demand for what we do number two our ability or proficiency to do what we do this is where skill and excellence comes in your ability to do what you do and then number three the difficulty in replacing you i come again our rewards in life financial honor whatever kind of reward whether financial or psychic whatever kind of reward will always be in exact ratio in exact proportion to number one the demand or the need for what you do number two your ability to do what you do number three the difficulty in replacing you when there are easy replacements for you you will never go far in life this is not from a competitive standpoint but you must make up your mind to be exceptional it is true that no man is indispensable but make it difficult to find an alternative to you and the company will retain you begging i assure you as much as they are downsizing people in this nation there are people who will not spend one month without a job they are too competent for that kind of condition they literally are the brains behind many corporations many years ago i used to know a gentleman he was working three jobs and he was only working three or four times a week he used to live in kaduna state but he worked in lagos and the company would fly him every week he was an it consultant if he coughs i think they'll buy him a, a pharmacy not a drug listen you must be so valuable and you must be so competent there is a measure of honor that only comes to masters i made up my mind and you've heard me say it i don't have an ambition to learn and know everything and to be exceptional in everything but in the areas where god has called me i made a covenant with myself and my life that i will stretch myself to a point of uncanny mastery in ministry in leadership every grace that is available for signs and wonders i will contend for it by light thank god for that which is given me but i will not rest and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you listen you are a music you are a, you are a worshiper you are a music artist don't just sing and be looking for those who know you to keep recycling you around a day will come they'll be tired of you because there will be too many alternatives you must trust god for illumination you must trust god for mastery learn at the feet of masters rise to a point where your songs don't die you are a businessman don't say i'm doing business they are not patronizing me oh i'm a chef who can place a demand for you until you serve kings you cannot receive the reward of kings if koinonia only provides value to people who are outside of politics and governance and business respectfully speaking and with every sense of responsibility then you will never be able to mentor kings and bless people the truths that are being dished out from here must be such that all and sundry can be benefactors of it truths that are consistent with scripture proven by the life of exceptional people exceptionally comp communicated backed up by the power of the holy ghost like fire into your spirit you carry that truth and you can run with it competence
make up your mind to be competent in the name of Jesus you are a man of God make up your mind to be competent one headache per year you are not you'll be ready for empty pews not in the times that we live in you want to come and sing and you say don't worry don't worry about the wordings or is it is it the melody just focus on the wordings then recite a poem recite a poem are we together yes I know that we all start gradually but make up your mind can I tell you this don't come and stand in front of the stage when you are not prepared you can relax with honor don't embarrass yourself relax with honor and train and train and make that mistake the stage is not for training it's in you Lord it's in you Lord we know there's more that's found in you. Apostle, I'm tired of this level. Then rise through competence. I'm tired of this level. Rise to serve kings. I'm tired of this level as a man of God. The key is not to ask people to come to listen to you. The mere fact, listen, a mango tree does not call you. It just produces fruits big and juicy a few months you pass the same tree as if you didn't see it now look at the skill you have to employ because of the, the the gift on it you use stones you use a rod you even climb it the tree never said you should be that desperate for it it only produced fruits i tell you why people are ignoring you there is nothing of there is nothing notable in your life you don't come to a tree that is not producing anything. Ask Jesus, your Jesus. Jesus came to a tree that had green leaves and no fruit. He didn't just advise it and say, next year, make sure that he cost it. That's what men will do when you attract men to your presence and you have nothing to offer. Before you ask men, come, make sure the table is ready. Let all things be ready before you call men for a feast. Don't call for a miracle service when you've not contended for the grace for healing. When they are not healed, they will say, I'm not healed. Don't call people to teach and then you are sharing things and sharing things and they go back and use the truth you're communicating and there's no results in their lives. There is nobody who lives what works. At the instance of results, results are magnetic. They can keep men there. Keep them in your company. Not by telling lies. The greatest way to market is to tell the truth. You have no fear when it is truth. Nothing to hide. Nothing to stage manage. It is true. If I tell you God will lift you, believe me, he will lift you. If I tell you God is, is shifting you, it will happen. Because if he did not say it, I don't have any business repeating. You are only afraid if you speak on your own. Please make up your mind that you're going to be competent. Believe us, let us not bring reproach to the name of Jesus. Let us go back and do our homework in music, in business, in politics, in leadership. Buy the truth and sell it not. Hallelujah. Every time I finish a meeting like this, when I go back home, sincerely speaking, maybe just rest refresh a bit i'm getting straight to my work as i'm preaching here right now i have my own assignments and i have things i'm doing i return from a meeting straight to this place and when i'm done not even my tiredness is an excuse there is a generation that is depending on my competence there are people on wheelchairs right now who are depending on my contending for that power it is more than what you want don't prophesy nonsense everything you say is not correct don't say it's just god testing me go back and do your homework your name is john no i'm israel you have two children no i have ten you are coming from abuja i'm coming from outside this country that margin of error is too human you can't blame god for it I made up my mind that I will never stand before anybody in this life and be intimidated to a point of shame. I will be challenged. I will be provoked unto godliness. 
but never that I stand before anyone. I found out the difference between you and anyone is number one, your level of enlightenment. Number two, the relationships that come at that enlightened level. Number three, the grace that is at work on your life. That's what separates people. Anybody you ever admire, this is what separates him from you. Can kings stand to applaud you? Can the great look at you and say, I am impressed. He behaves like us. Or can they show you the door and say, go out there and never come back again? Joseph was prepared. He knew he was ready to stand before Pharaoh. I'm sure when Joseph was leaving the prison, he looked at those who were there and said, gentlemen, I'm coming for you, but no longer as a prisoner. I know that when I meet the king, it's impossible for the king to have this kind of competence before him and send me back to the prison. And here's how he did it. He said, let the king search for a man. It's a diplomatic way of saying, I dare you, search the entire Egypt. If you will find a man, you've been here sweating for hours and they brought me out of prison. Don't trivialize my value. Search for the entire Egypt. If you will find a man who will interpret your dream. Listen, at the instance of competence, without consulting with kingmakers and elders, he became the prime minister. So there are times that competence can compress time and in a moment enthrone you. Someone can look at you and without an interview, just a five minutes conversation. He says, come and be the Nigerian representative of my company. Come and be the African representative of my company. And you are like, it's a joke. Sorry, sir, are you joking? And he says, does it sound like I'm joking? You have what I'm looking for. Do you have what the world is looking for? Do you have what the world is looking for? There are consultants and specialists today that are being flown from US, being flown from UK, from India, to come and perform surgical procedures on certain people why because they are masters there are authorities global authorities in certain fields before you go so far you have they have to vet what you are writing is that true no matter where you are if you want to be initiated to this realm of greatness you must pass through their tutelage they look at what you're saying and say no adjust this adjust that May you be a master. The level of mastery that drives shame from your life. That you have a restaurant that will make people come and sit down there as though they were bound with a spell. What is it about your food? I found a secret. Africa, we love superstition. God is a miracle worker, but he's not a magician. It will take competence to attract honor. It will take competence to attract the goodwill of people. Nobody will clap for you indefinitely for doing nothing. Your assignment, go back to the drawing board. Your assignment, create a drawing board if you do not have one. Don't clap for yourself for too long. You've heard me say it here, that no one claps for you for the same thing twice. When they clap for you once, that's enough for that realm. If you don't do anything higher, nobody will applaud you for it again. Are we blessed? I made up my mind to bring glory to Jesus through my life. Not just through my prayers, not just through my fasting, but through competence. That anywhere he would have me serve his purposes, any church I have the opportunity to minister in or here in Koinonia, that by the grace of God, I will never waste your two, three, four hours. It will never be that you come for any Koinonia meeting and at the end of it, you are frowning and say, I just wasted my time. I would have done something else. It will be evil of me to come and waste your precious time. Many of you are veterans in business. You are captains over many. Why will you come and sit down here for hours and then learn nothing and just jump around and laugh and share the grace? That's not the God we serve. By the grace of God, you will never sit here and go back with regret. No. That whilst you sit down here, quality life applicable information 
will come to you that is applicable both in your spiritual life and your secular environment and then the engracing from the spirit this is what makes it more than a lecture a lecture stops in the realm of your mind but there is an anointing an unction that backs every truth maybe i should say this as we prepare to round up many years ago the lord showed me a very very interesting revelation i was caught up in the realm of the spirit listen carefully and then i saw a very big door very giant gate and then in it, it was made up of smaller doors and on every door a scripture was written i noticed it was that smaller doors were opening and closing opening and closing and every time they open light would just come from them and i wondered what i was seeing and i was saying lord what is this and then the lord told me every time you catch a revelation in scripture the grace dimension to defend that truth is that light that is released so any truth you cannot validate with your life is not yet a revelation to you no matter how long you have talked about it there is always grace given to the saints to defend the truths that we communicate and the Lord walking with them confirming the word the word with signs following the law of absolute surrender the law of mental transformation the law of competence and mastery can you lend me 10 more minutes let's talk about the fourth law and then we pray very quickly the law of faith the fourth spiritual law that is responsible for the excelling of the saints in this kingdom is the law of faith mark 11 please from verse 22 to 24 just summarize it quickly and then we'll pray my spirit is fired up and Jesus answering saith unto them have faith in God original translation says have the faith of God it says verily verily I say unto you whosoever shall say to this mountain be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he saith 24 therefore koinonia i say unto you what things soever ye desire hallelujah when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them hebrews 11 says now faith is the substance of things that i hope for he calls it the evidence of things not seen the evidence of things not seen the evidence of things not seen please permit me to just use money for an example watch this the evidence of things not seen this is a hundred dollar bill please come watch this he wants to buy say maybe he wants to buy this are we together now and it is a hundred dollars if i give him this i didn't give him the book but i gave him the substance of what he's hoping for this is the evidence that he can go to the shop and purchase it are we together now this is what he wants to buy it is not the money he wants but the moment i gave him hundred dollar he started smiling it's as good as having it because he can go to the person go to them that sell and buy that's what the parable of the virgins once you have the ability to buy them that sell will not hinder you so this is it and he comes to the person who sells and drops this and picks this so this was not supposed to remain just as money are we together now eventually i should see you holding this if you hold this forever something is wrong you it is either fake money or you don't know where to meet them that sell the moment you hold this you shouldn't just start jumping yes rejoice that you have it but don't stop there go to them that sell and exchange it for the real substance so the bible says faith is the substance of what you hope for the evidence that although it is not here i have the purchasing power to get it 
listen the house is not yet there but I have the substance this is the evidence that it is going to be mine the lifting has not yet appeared but this is the evidence now in this kingdom the currency is the word of God this is it instead of giving you this mundane piece of paper that when you tear it you cannot go to CBN and say I was holding real money it's gone this is it this is the instrument we use to purchase possibilities in this kingdom every time you find truth it's like money being given to you there is an exchange system in the realm of the spirit you carry that truth this mysteries I'm teaching you now is like dashing you money because you are soon going to carry these truths you are learning there are them that sell don't worry you will go to work tomorrow you will go around and you will start seeing them that sell all around your destiny helpers are them that sell the moment you meet them you will exchange these mysteries for lifting for favor everything in this kingdom is bought but you must know the currencies that we used to buy with in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the same was with god in the beginning john 1 says it says and without him it says all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made listen to me very quickly I ask for 10 minutes faith is based on two qualities of God there are two major qualities of God that produce Bible faith number one his integrity numbers 23 and verse 19 very quickly please numbers chapter 23 and verse 19 believers read with me ready one to read God is not a man uh-huh neither the son of man that he should repent had he said and shall he not do it or had he spoken and shall he not make it good please look up the bible says god is not a man there is a weakness in all men we lie you don't lie because you are bad you lie because you are human so he says God is not a man that he should lie he became a man but he is not a man if God is a man he must worship who created him he is not a man he became a man are we together the Bible says when God says a thing you can trust him he will make it good everybody say integrity the word integrity comes from the word integer sameness as within so without sameness when you say God is a God of integrity that means there is consistency dependability when he says I will lift you he will not turn tomorrow and say no I will change my mind provided the conditions that make for the delivery of that promise is met and kept he is true to his word so the first quality of God that Bible faith depends on is his integrity you want to deal with someone you know will not play games with you God does not do April Fool no when he tells you I will lift you he really means it Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 it shall come to pass the Bible declares if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all his commandments which I command you this day he says that the Lord will set thee on high above the nations of the earth and then he says that all these blessings shall come on thee and shall overtake you there is a condition I'm the God of integrity I am able to do that God is dependable he's a God of integrity the first quality of God that Bible faith depends on is his integrity you must have a revelation of God's integrity when he sends you and tells you I will be there with you trust him trust him 
even when you do not see him trust him are we together integrity he does not change when God speaks to me I believe him when he sent me to this city he assured me of his divine presence and I believed him I came because I believed him nobody signed any form and said I'm coming no faith he said it I believe where will the money come from for the bills it will come through the voice that spoke where will the people to listen come from the word will bring them i know that god is a god of integrity you can trust him you can trust him i know that men have failed you they promised to do a they did b they promised to do x they did y but god is not like that when he says a thing he has the power to do it imagine the things he told you this year that this is your year of victory you must believe it is true imagine the thing he told you this year that when men say there is a casting down for you it will be that there is a lifting up you have to believe him he told you this year would not end with you crying like other years why are you now doubting his integrity God is not scratching his head wondering how to defend his name in your life he's the almighty God he's able to do it number two the second quality of God that our faith depends on is his ability there are people that have integrity but they do not have ability I can help you but sincerely I don't have the money he has integrity and the person he's standing with will say it's true he's like that honestly if he has money he will give you so his integrity is not in doubt but there is no ability Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 now unto him who has ability he does not just have integrity listen carefully he has ability to do there are people who want to give you jobs they have integrity but they do not have ability there are people who want to lift you they will tell you just pray for me if i really become the director i will not let you suffer they have integrity but when it has to do with performance you need more than integrity you need ability god is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think and he does that according to the power that works in us everybody say god is able, god is able. one more time prophesy say god is, able. god is able don't be in doubt whether he can lift you apostle god said he will honor me where will the resources come from ask the raven where it got bread and came and fed elijah in the night this is god he can make anything out of anything so he has integrity and he has ability based on the awareness of his integrity and his ability you can now believe him what does it mean to believe him to count him as true then what do you do the next thing you do listen carefully listen carefully this is where many people miss it out believing is not faith believing is only part of the faith equation if all you do is believe you are not walking in faith Just because you have rice does not mean you have fried rice. Rice is a major ingredient, but not the only ingredient. Just because you have salt does not mean you have a well-prepared meal. Believing is only one of the equations to faith. Listen to me. The foundation of Bible faith hinging on God's integrity and his ability is the awareness of the promises and the instructions that your blessings are connected to the awareness of the promises the awareness of the instructions that your promises or your blessings are connected to here's how it works every commitment of god in the scripture there is a condition 
every blessing in scripture there is a condition a participatory condition that must be met your condition is not necessarily adding to what christ has done but it's a participatory condition if 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 you want to prosper find out the biblical conditions that make for prosperity subscribe to it with all your heart having this at the back of your mind that at the back end of your obedience is a god of integrity and the god of ability you only have the readiness to judge every disobedience when your obedience is complete now there's a lot of blind believing god in the body of christ and believing god for this and believing god for this you will keep jumping like that forever respectfully speaking now there are conditions the bible is full of prophecies the bible is full of principles the bible is full of promises when you walk through your garden of eden that's this bible you search for the things god said he would do and search for the conditions connected to them you want to prosper there are conditions attached you are only manifesting faith when number one you believe that god has integrity and ability then you find out the economic system of the kingdom the principles that make for the blessing of the saints then you obtain grace from god to walk in keeping with those conditions only when you act out in obedience is god committed to you are we together it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord. I read that scripture already. The Bible says, There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. The Bible says, A diligent hand shall be made fat. We just read it here that a valuable person will attract the attention of kings, the gift of a man. So don't sit down and say, God, prosper me. He's saying you walk in keeping with the principles that release that dimension of the blessing. When you walk in keeping with the principles connected to any blessing, there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to stop you from entering that inheritance. This is called the law of faith. Are we together? We are going to pray. John 11 and 40. John 11 and 40. We have to close quickly and pray. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto you, that if thou shalt believe, you will see the glory of God. This is what confuses a lot of people just because jesus said believe you have to examine the word that was translated believe there he did not just mean if you are aware that i'm able to do it no no if you are convicted and then you act in keeping with the truths and the instructions that i give you there is an assurance that you will see the glory of the lord let me wrap up tonight then by defining faith this is my definition of faith that faith is the name given to the action that you take faith is the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction of who God is and the integrity of his word faith is the name given to the action not the conviction the action you take based on your conviction on who God is and the integrity of this person faith is the action you take as an obedient response to divine instructions and divine principles write that down faith is the action that you take based you take to what did I say now it was from my mind in response the action you take in response to divine instructions and divine principles is called faith. One more time, the action you take in response to divine principles and divine instructions. If it be thou, bid me come. And he said, come. The action is called faith. I will lift you 
I believe. What are the conditions? Be diligent. When you are diligent, that diligence is called faith. Are we blessed? I've shared with you tonight four kingdom mysteries. Please do not forget them. I want you to listen to this teaching again and again. You'll find it free on YouTube. Go to our page, Koinonia Global. Our, our YouTube page, you can listen again and again. Go through all our social media pages. It's been broken down for you to listen again and learn. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and the hearing that produces understanding. Open up your heart. By the grace of God, next week we are going to finish up the remaining mysteries. And you will hold them like keys and you can tell the gate of destiny i am ready open up open up open up i will last because i've surrendered everything i will not become mediocre because my belief systems are superior i will not be left out in life because i am competent and i am valuable and then i will not be a victim I'm not just a sociological being, a homo sapien. I relate with the divine through the law of faith. These are irrefutable keys to an excelling lifestyle. Please rise up on your feet. We're wrapping up. I'm on my way to better days. on my way to better days status is changing there's no more decline i'm on my way to better days prophesy status is changing there's no more decline i'm on my way to better days I'm on my way, on my way, I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way, on my way, on my way to better days. You're on your way, on your way. You're on your way to better days. Now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. Please turn it into a prayer. Lord, the grace to apply my life to these mysteries I obtain from heaven. Please lift your voice and pray. The grace. The grace. The grace. Grace, we're wrapping up. Lift your voice and obtain grace from heaven. The grace to lay down, the grace to sustain a superior belief system, the grace to mastery and competence, the grace to be valuable. The grace to live by faith. He says the just shall live by faith. I'll never be the same. Never be the same. The same. In the name of Jesus. Revealing Jesus. Bringing glory to his name. Exploits by the spirit. Exploits through knowledge. Exploits through understanding. Hallelujah. Last prayer point. Listen, the Bible says the word is the seed, the parable of the sower. As soon as the word was sown, the Bible says Satan cometh immediately. Those that fall on good ground, he said, are those who understand, not just those who hear. I assure you, one day you will lock yourself at home and you will stand before your mirror with tears coming down your face and say thank you this is a system of insurance 
this is a bailout system the cure to mediocrity the cure to a life of competition and jealousy you found your way i'd like you to obtain grace one more time and say lord grace to do grace to do i will do this i will do this i will practice it by the spirit i will practice it by the spirit it will cost my life to excel i will practice it by the spirit Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please lend me two minutes and as a body of believers here and following online, I'd like us to lift up Nigeria in a prayer in one minute. We are responsible believers and the church has a role to play in the stability of any nation. We are responsible leaders. We can lend our voice to the heavens. We must cry to God and say, Lord, help us. We humble ourselves and we ask for help. We have stretched our intellect. We've stretched what we know to do. We need divine strategies. Lift your voice and pray. Pray for the government. Pray for members of parliament. Declare peace upon our nation. Lend your voice in prayer. Lend your voice to prophesy. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. It says they shall prosper that love you. Lord, grant peace. Peace to our children. Peace in Abuja. Peace in the north. Peace in the south. Peace in the east. Peace in the west. In the name of Jesus, let the voice of violence be far from our habitation. We pray for wisdom direct our leaders in the name of Jesus grant us selflessness to lead this nation with wisdom grant the grace to look beyond our personal benefits and lead a nation where peace and justice will reign in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus very quickly you are here and you are saying apostle I want to hand over my entire life to Jesus I came to church because I was invited I came because there is a hunger and a longing in my heart for Jesus whether you are here in the main auditorium or all of the overflows down to the basement outside anywhere I know our time is gone but we cannot compromise on the mandate for the global harvest just two minutes for you wherever you are I'd like you to boldly leave your seat and come stand here it's my joy and my honor to leave to lead you to Jesus you are saying apostle I gave my life to Jesus Christ but for some reason things have gone haywire in my life don't be ashamed don't wait for someone to come be the first to come take that bold step let's celebrate them as they come Koinonia, is this the best you can do for them? All those in the overflows, just walk to your screen. Just walk to your screen. You may not have the time to come to the main auditorium. All those in the overflows, down to the basement, outside, following online. I'd like you to connect as I lead God's people in prayer. If you're still joining them, come quickly. Be bold. Come to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you for making this very bold decision. I'd like you to lift your right hand. All of you here, lift it to Jesus. All in the overflow, do same. Lift your hands to Jesus. Those following online in your room, your office, your car, just watching from your device, you can lift your hands right there. Jesus is there. I want you to pray this prayer loud say after me lord jesus you're joining them join them very quickly say lord jesus i love you with all my heart i believe 
that you are the son of God tonight I have heard your word I surrender everything to you I receive forgiveness of sin I receive eternal life into my spirit I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare from tonight until forever I belong to Jesus I am a child of God in Jesus name keep your hands lifted father thank you thank you for this once the Bible declares that whosoever will come to you you will in no wise cast away they have come with hearts open they have come with hearts repentant dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline